All right, it's so another Resin Basics video, and today we're working with this mold. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. All right, I'm doing another Resin Basics video and we're still exploring alcohol ink Petri dish techniques. And today we're gonna to do something special, but we're gonna use this mold today. And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna fill this guy up with some resin, put it to the side, let it sit for a little bit, and that'll help it thicken up some, and also the bubbles to rise up. Uh, but I think we're going to play with some white paste and see if we can create some little techniques in here or special effects. So let's get started. Okay, I am using a resin that has a long working time. This is a stone coat art coat resin and I've been able to get easy two hour working time out of this, sometimes two and a half hours. So that's pretty long. You'll have to check your resin as far as the working time on that. Do not go to the end of it. Go to almost like the three quarter mark um, as far as waiting. I'm trying to pour very carefully and talk at the same time. This is jerky. All right, I'm not filling up this mold. I'm putting about, oh, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch in here, maybe a quarter of an inch, not a whole lot. And I'm probably gonna put this guy in something afterwards. So that's why I'm not worried about it going super thick. All right, a little bit more in the head area here. I think that'll do it. This technique does fool the eye into thinking that it's really deep. So that's the cool thing about it. I do want to emphasize something else is I use a, this is like a little bamboo skewer. I stole them out of my kitchen, but what go, what comes in the studio always stays in the studio. Now I happen to see that this didn't have any resin in there. So I'm just kind of pushing that in there. But what I definitely want to bring you in on is I put this at almost like a 45 degree angle and go up around the edges to release any bubbles that might adhere to the sides because once those that resin cures and that bubble is there it becomes a little sharp pointy thing and if you're touching it at all with your hands not good i'd rather my artwork not hurt people to be honest with you so it doesn't take very long to go through it this is not as detailed as like the dragon I have, which has got lots of little crevices. So this won't take very long. Not a lot of pressure, just kind of gliding it across the bottom, just making contact. I've already seen a couple bubbles pop up. So, all right. So at any rate, the point of this, putting this to the side is allowing those bubbles to have a chance to come to the surface. Because if you do do any torching, you want to do it before you start adding your alcohol ink because, well, it's alcohol ink. <laughs> we got to be careful with that. Um, yeah. Okay. So, oh, and also, if there was any recommendations, um, I have had really good luck with our coat uh, from Stone Coat Countertops with doing these kind of treatments. Uh, casting resin. If you're looking for something with some depth to it, casting resin is probably the better uh, way to go. Um, or you can do multiple layers of pores and get this guy filled in and such. So just something to think about there. All right, I'm gonna put this guy to the side and we'll get back to the fun stuff in just a moment. Okay, it's been quite a bit of time. Let me see if I can hit this real carefully with the heat. Okay, because once the alcohol goes in, no more torching. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do here is the body of the horse, I'm going to work in browns. And then in the mane, in here, I'm going to work in some blues and purples. So I haven't done browns with uh, the Petri dish technique, but I'm willing to give it a try. Because why not, right? But what I think I'm gonna do is a couple drops of the violet maybe in the, um, where the, the hoof is. Okay. Here we go, let's see. We've got a light, a medium, and I think that's fairly dark, it's teak wood, I hope it is. Okay, so, whoops. Get this along the belly area. This is the lighter tone. And then right around the butt. Tushy. A little bit there. Okay. This is the rest. And this is teak wood, but you know what? It's not doing quite what I wanted it to do. I'll be right back. Okay, I picked up some pitch black because I want to hit that at the base. So let me do my purple to make sure that I've got a little bit of that right down here. I'm gonna do two drops. But next to it, I'm going to do some of the pitch black going up the legs because I think that always looks interesting, either dark legs or light legs, especially around by the, the end of the leg, by the hoof area. All right, so there's that. I'm going to do a little bit more of the ginger. Okay, that's enough of that. That is plenty of brown. Now the trick is, is to try to do a drop of white. No. Always make sure on your pinata white to give it a good shake before you use it. And I'm using the very tall bottles. So, a good shake. And I don't think mine came with a little ball in there. So, you know, when you uh, shake up the uh, metallic colors, they'll have a little ball in there. My white didn't have a ball. So, so basically, what you're supposed to do is kind of have like a drop of white for every drop of color. And it helps push it down. However, with the way I apply the color, it's kind of hard to tell whether or not I have enough white down or not. So we are just going to do the best we can. All right, I'm going to get this so that it doesn't hopefully go out too much further. Okay, get some more white. In here in the face. Now I was thinking about doing something here and I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a try because I am always up for a little bit of an experiment. Get that white, in. oops. Okay, there was a lot of white. Excuse me on the squeezy sounds. Okay. 
put my black and browns to the side. That actually looks rather interesting. Okay, so we're gonna do blue close to here. And I'm gonna do a little blue over here. Hopefully it gets incorporated. All right. I'm gonna do blue on the underside of the tail. I'm gonna overlap the brown just a little bit. Okay, now I've got a blue violet and also an indigo, which might be actually fairly similar colors. Get that moving up there a little bit. All right, and we're gonna follow through with a little bit of the blue violet color. Okay, that works. All right, here we go. Get some more of the white. I'm concentrating, and when I concentrate, I can't talk. Now, sometimes you'll have a problem with uh, when you pull this out of the mold that there's so much alcohol ink in your resin, it might change the chemistry a little bit. So if you're concerned about that, one of the things you can do is before you pour, pull it out of your mold, do a little bit of a clear uh, like a flood coat on the back side and without adding any alcohol ink to it. You can add a color to it, um, but that way you'll have that rigid um, resin backing. I'm going to go ahead and add some white because it got dark and I think it pushed the blue down here. You pick up any white? Yeah. So either this is gonna look good or it's gonna look like a hot mess. I'm not sure. There. We'll say good. We'll think positive. Good. Okay. So I'm gonna bring you in for a close-up. Super zoomed in. So the colors will get to move in and keep moving for a little while. It's really interesting to see how this stuff behaves. Sometimes you'll get in the area that just looks like it's percolating, like it's cooking or something. It's like, what kind of alien thing is growing in there? Oh, that purple really moved up. That ought to look actually interesting. So I'm gonna put, put this probably into a tray so I'm not worried about it being flexible. So let me describe what I was talking to you about a little bit better. So before pulling this out, if I wasn't gonna use this as a tray, I would wait for this to cure and then put either a clear coat of resin on it or mix a color with that resin and put a, a coating of resin on that. Let that cure up and then pull out the whole thing. Now if you pulled it out before, and then you put it back in the mold and you try to add your clear to it, sometimes that doesn't work so well. It'll seep down in the edges or the cracks and add some clear to the front, and sometimes it just doesn't work out quite well. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add a little white paste to the main area and the tail area. So let's see if we can get some added texture. Okay, so... I have a little bit of resin with some white titanium mixed in, and you can see by how it's
flowing. It's been here for a little bit. It's getting kind of thick. And the cool thing about that is it'll allow me to drizzle some lines. So I'm gonna try and see if I can pick up a little bit of this. And I'm just going to kind of work back and forth. And then it's gonna push some areas down. I'm gonna try and see if I can get a little bit more, some thicker lines. Because that white titanium is really heavy. A little bit in the main. Oops, I ended up picking up some of the alcohol ink. Nope, yep, it's still there. <laughs> All right, now I get some for the tail. Let's see, I'm gonna twirl this around, see if I can keep a bit on here. Also gonna keep going back to a point. Okay, there. I don't mind mixing a thick line with a thin line because I think it'll look a little bit more interesting. thicker line right there. Alright. Just do one really thick line. Alright, we'll see what that does. Ooh, I can't wait. Okay, this guy is cured up and ready to be pulled out of the mold. Not a lot has changed here. It seems like a, a little bit more of the blue has come up. I don't know what it looks like underneath. I'm really curious. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this has come out well. It's got some nice gradation in here, which is cool. There's even a little bit of a, a hint of light here and here. I probably could have gone with a darker brown and that would have helped with the lighter brown showing up a bit. Let me zoom in. A lot of fun petri elements here with the little lily pads and then this area here is where that white paste was that we applied on top and it created this almost material like look to it now it did wander a little bit over in here I'm not too worried about it So I encourage you to experiment and have some fun, figure out this medium and how you can push it. Okay, 
see if I can get it on an edge here. Maybe I'll do it on one of the feet. So I pulled it out when it's super flexible. It just makes it easier to pull it out of detailed molds. I'm gonna rest, put this off to the side to let it finish curing. All right, there you go. hit that like button hit the subscribe button definitely hit the bell to get notified next time put a video up and check it, the links in the description below for any supplies I use as well as um, any of the colors I use in resin I get them from artist till death except for the alcohol links in this particular project uh, also uh, links from my Etsy store there you go